organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. On this edition of Daily Iowan TV, Benchmarks 2.0, what Iowa City wants to do differently with this year's bench painting project. It was nice on Thursday. We'll tell you if you have more of the same weather in your Iowa City forecast. And into the sports studio, spring is in the air, which can only mean one thing. Hawkeye football is back. All that and more is coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts right now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowa TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning in to your Thursday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Allie Wright. And I'm Kelsey Clemmy. When in doubt, follow the money. That's exactly what a new task force plans to do, as announced by the Iowa Board of Regents at their meeting Thursday. The group revealed its plan to review funding via a task force led by current regent David Miles. The new committee will look at changing the state's funding model for universities. Currently, Iowa and Iowa State each receive 40% of state funding allocations, while the UNI receives 20%. Since fiscal year 2010, tuition has been made up of the University of Iowa's general fund, then state funding. And hundreds of shirts were strung upon the Pentecrest Thursday by the Rape Victim Advocacy Program. Both shirts and shoes were, were on display to raise awareness about domestic violence and rape. Each pair of shoes was intended to symbolize college-age victims unable to walk home safely. The shirts, meanwhile, were made by either victims or their families. Carla Miller, the executive director for the program, said while the amount of shirts hopefully symbolizes how widespread the problem is, it's usually a particular shirt that resonates with readers. There are lots and lots of people who are victimized. The messages on the shirts tell you just how deep that pain is and how significant the impact is on them and that it affects every aspect of their lives. The Take Back the Night event begins at 6.30 on Tuesday and the March Through Downtown begins at 7.30. The event is hosted by RVAP alongside other local domestic violence advocacy programs. It's out with the old and in with the new as the next round of public bench art is underway downtown. Public Space One, the Iowa Youth Writing Project, and Reclaiming Roots are partnering together for the second of three budgeted seasons of Benchmarks. Volunteers have already begun power washing, sanding, and priming last year's benches to get them back to their original state. Interested painters are encouraged to attend one of three workshop sessions in the coming weeks in order to have their designs approved. Creative lead John Enkelbrecht says that this year's benchmarks will take a more proactive approach. Depending on the success of the project and if it's something that is going to continue, um, it also sort of depends on the landscape of downtown Iowa City, which is um, going to change quite a bit in the next several years. Last year, approximately 75 benches were painted. This year, the project is aiming for more than 100. Engelbrecht says that he plans to have all benches painted over Memorial Day weekend and completed in full by June 1st. And still to come on Daily Iowan TV, Stadium Facelift. We'll tell you about the new addition you can expect to see at Kinnick Stadium. And in sports, a quick look at the draft prospects for three former members of the Black and Gold. But first, our own Nick Zafranski has your weekend forecast, and I think everyone in Iowa City will like what he has to say. Nick? They sure will, Allie. Friday morning will start out a bit chilly at 40 degrees, but into the afternoon, things start to heat up at a partly cloudy 60. Friday night temperatures stay relatively warm, only dipping down to 58 degrees. I'll step aside here as we take a look at the six-day forecast. Saturday will start out the warm weekend with a high of 68 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Sunday looks like it will be a beautiful day with clear skies and a high of 73. Monday we could see some rain before Tuesday when the temperature shoots up to a high of 84. And your six day winds up with 70 degree Wednesday and a 40% chance of rain. Definitely looks like some shorts and t-shirt weather guys. That's all I've got. Back to you. Thanks Nick. You will no longer need quarters to park your car downtown. Kelly O'Lean tells us why Iowa City officials decided to make the change in parking meters. A new form of parking payment is being tested in downtown Iowa City. 
to ensure the meters will benefit the public, Iowa City has city workers walking around with clipboards. The next two weeks, there's a bunch of different styles around the downtown area. You just come up, you hit uh, 405. These workers are explaining like the how the meters, meters work. You just put your change in here, uh, add more time. I think so. They are to show spot. people how the new meters differ from the old meters. Is it okay? And we'll spit you out a receipt. You're good to go. Yeah. But these new ones will take credit cards, so so we're interested if people are excited about that, if they're going to use credit card, if it's worth it. Um, there's some different phone payment options, some some phone app. Um, opportunities with this so we're, we're trying to get some feedback to see the best fit for down here. The feedback received will go towards future Iowa City parking meter plans. The new meters have a credit card slot as well as a place for change and one can also pay at the meter box to receive a ticket for their parking. For the next two weeks Iowa City locals as well as other Iowa City officials will be walking around in black and yellow jackets with clipboards explaining how these credit card meters work. The city is planning to use the feedback towards more new parking options. Iowa City hopes the new meters will make parking downtown more efficient. Daily Iowa TV, I'm Kelly O'Neill. Thanks Kelly. And in world news, Officials said Thursday the suspects of the Boston bombings last week were planning to set off more remaining bombs that they had in Times Square. However, they were intercepted by a police gun battle before they made it to New York City. The New York police commissioner said Zokar Zarniev, pictured here, told, in, told investigators from his hospital bed that he and his now deceased older brother decided at the last minute last Thursday night to drive to New York and launch another attack. And all five of the remaining living U.S. presidents appeared at the dedication of the George W. Bush Presidential Library on Thursday. Presidents Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, and his father shared stories of their time at the White House before a crowd of about 10,000 people. The 43rd President of the United States also celebrated the event in Dallas with his wife, former First Lady Laura Bush. And in more news from the Board of Regents meeting, the board approved a new video screen and scoreboard at Kinnick Stadium for the next season of Hawkeye football. The University of Iowa will pay Dactronics approximately $4.5 million for the new video screen, which will be a higher quality than the current screen. The new screen will be built into the current frame of the scoreboard. Parts of the scoreboard control room in Carver Hawkeye Arena will also be replaced. The project could cost the University of Iowa a total of $9 million. Well, Kinnick's getting a new video board, but Daily Iowa TV is giving an Iowa-centric look at the NFL draft. For more, here's Lauren Moss and Allie Raisley. Hi guys and welcome back to the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio. Draft coverage coming this Sunday, but we start tonight's show with two numbers, four and eight. That's right, Lauren, four and eight. That will ultimately be what is remembered about the Hawkeyes on the gridiron in 2012 and 2013. Yeah, Allie, after a huge overtime win on the road in East Lansing, Kirk's crew looked to be heading in the right direction. Instead, six games and six losses later, the black and gold completed one of the worst seasons in the 14-year tenure of head coach Kirk Ferentz. Turnover on Ferentz's staff and depth chart won't help things either, with several assistants and players leaving the program over the winter for greener pastures. To put things in perspective, last year's squad failed to crack the top 100 of both passing and rushing offense nationally. One of the players expected to push the black and gold back into the upper echelon of Big Ten Conference will be Mark Wiseman. The Air Force transfer led the Hawks on the ground last year and bulldozed his way to the team lead in touchdowns while also catching the attention of just about everyone in Big Ten Conference. Our own Kate Constable caught up with the playmaker who's eager to get back on the field this Saturday. Kate? Kate Constable standing here with Mark Wiseman. Now Mark, the spring game's coming up. Coach said it's going to be a little bit different than last year. It's more of a practice. This year more of a game. How are you guys going to use that to, for improvement? Yeah, it's definitely always trying to get better each and every day. And we just we just found out that we were playing a game this year. It's exciting for all of us. Uh, exciting, more exciting for the fans. Hopefully we get a good crowd out there. Now, how since last year has your run game evolved? I mean, you ran the ball a lot last year, but you've had more experience and more time this spring to kind of build your run game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have a lot of good running backs, a lot of depth on this team, and uh, our new coach, Coach White, has brought some a lot of new things to the table that has helped all of us running backs. What types of new things? Because, like, you guys ran the ball a lot last year, and Coach said in the presser that, He's totally all for running the ball, and he wants to do that a lot this year. But not being as successful as you guys had hoped last year, how is the game going to change? You no, know, we just got to be more uh, 
more powerful out, po powerful out there, um, have a base in the hole. Coach White always talks about that. And just running through people, getting an extra two, three yards, it all adds up in the end. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, no Back to, to you in the studio. Wiseman, an unknown coming into 2012, will be one of the few experienced players back for Hawkeye offense this year. But as our own Annie Costable explains, there's a, still a lot to be done before the lights go on in Kinnick this fall. Well, you know, we've, we've had our ups and downs, like probably most teams. Uh... And this Hawkeye team is no different. What's different is Iowa's known reputation of excellence. So the question is, how will they get back to that after a less than excellent season? The first place to start might be with replacing the key to their offense in quarterback James Vandenberg. And right now there are three guys neck and neck for the starting spot. We want guys that uh, uh, can make plays off schedule. Uh, when things break down, you know, who can extend a play, who can make a play that's not exactly the way you, you draw it up. We want guys that will take care of the football. Uh, you know, that'll be part of the evaluation. Uh, we want guys that make big plays. Uh, so, uh, you know, those are things that uh, we're talking to them on a, on a daily basis. Here's what happened in yesterday's practice. Here are your mental mistakes. Here are your explosive plays. You know, here's uh, this and that. Uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a whole litany of things, you know, that, that they are aware of that, we're, you know, we're trying to evaluate. Another key guy on the offense that needs replacing is Keenan Davis, who was the Hawks' go-to wideout for the 2012 season. The guy they're looking to now, Kevontae Martin-Manley. Kevontae for sure is a guy that, you know, has played a bunch of ball, and, and uh, it was good to have him back Saturday. And uh, he's an experienced guy, and he communicates well on the field. Uh, I learned a lot from Keenan. You know, he, he, he was our leader of the group. Um, he was a senior. Uh, I learned how to study film. I learned how some route techniques, and I learned uh, you got to make plays if you want to excel in this game. The need for explosive plays might be the biggest change we see in this Hawkeye offense, something the team struggled with throughout the 2012 season. Most of explosive plays in a passing game come off play action because that's when you got a chance to freeze the secondary. Usually play action creates better protection. You can hold the ball longer. Guys can move down the field. So. We've done a lot of things this spring where, you know, hard play action and the receiver has a vertical decision to make at 16, uh, whether or not he goes deep, sits down, turns in or out. Um, all that takes time to do. Uh, but we've also tried to be very, very cognizant of giving our guys some opportunity to push the ball down the field. We were capable last year, but uh, we didn't emphasize it enough, I think. Right now, we're emphasizing it every day in practice. Um, us receivers, we're looking for it, we're expecting it, and the quarterbacks are looking to throw it. So, big plays are coming. It's no doubt that change is what this program needs right now. And in 2013, change is what we'll see. Annie Costable, Daily Iowan TV Sports. New players will obviously have to step up for the Hawks in 2013, but several former players will be looking to play on Sundays this fall. That's right, Allie. All eyes are going to be on Radio City Music Hall in New York City Thursday night, where the NFL Draft will be taking center stage. Micah Hyde, Keenan Davis, and James Vandenberg will all be looking for homes over the next couple of weeks. Full profiles of their pro prospects this Sunday. Spring practice highlights on tap after our programming break as well. But for now, we're out of time. Guys, back to you at the desk. Finally, Daily Island TV is the only place to get a look into Friday's pages of the Daily Island. We'll tell you what local students are doing to raise money for an earthquake relief in China. And read an update on new additions to the Iowa River landing development. That's your latest edition of Daily Island TV. But of course, you can check us out anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Have a great weekend, Iowa City.